Fox and Socks by Dr. Seuss. <sighs> fox socks, box knocks, knocks in box, fox in socks, knocks on fox in socks in box, socks on knocks and knocks in box, fox in socks on box on knocks. Chicks with bricks come, chicks with brock blocks come, chicks with bricks and blocks and clocks come. Look, sir, look, sir, Mr. Knox, sir, let's do tricks with bricks and blocks, sir. Let's do tricks with chicks and clocks, sir. Uh, first, I'll make a quick trick big brick stack. Then I'll make a quick trick block stack. You can make a quick trick chick stack. You can make a quick trick clock stack. And here's a new trick, Mr. Knox. Socks on chicks and chicks on fox. Fox on clocks on bricks and blocks. Bricks and blocks on knocks on box. Now we come to ticks and tocks, sir. Try to say this, Mr. Knox, sir. Clocks on fox tick. Clocks on knox talk. Six sick, six sick bricks tick, six six sick chicks tuck. Please, sir, I don't like this trick, sir. My tongue isn't quick or slick, sir. I get all those ticks and clocks, sir, mixed up with the chicks and tucks, sir. I can't do it, Mr. Fox, sir. I'm so sorry, Mr. Knox, sir. Here's an easy game to play. Here's an easy thing to say. New socks, two socks, who socks, Sue socks. Who sue sue socks? Sue 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 socks. Who sees who sees who sue? Who's new socks, sir? You see sue sue sue's new socks, sir. That's not easy, Mister Fox, sir. Who comes crow claw? Let's just do that one again. Who sews who socks? Sue so sue socks. Who sees who so who's new so socks, sir? You see Sue so new Sue's new socks, sir. That's not easy, Mr. Fox, sir. Who comes? Crow comes. Slow Joe Crow comes. Who sews crow's clothes? Sue so cr cr crow's clothes. Slow Joe Crow sews whose clothes? Sue's clothes. Sue sews socks of fox in socks now. Slow Joe Crow sews knocks in box now. So Sue sews rose on Slow Joe Crow's clothes. Fox sews hose on Slow Joe Crow's nose. Hose goes. Rose grows. Nose hose goes some. Crow's no. Crow's. Crow's rose grows some. Mr. Fox, I hate this game, sir. This game makes my tongue quite lame, sir. Mr. Fox, Mr. Knox, sir, what a shame, sir. We'll do, we'll find something new to do now. Here's lots, here's la, here's lots of new blue goo now. New goo, blue goo, gooey gooey blue goo, new goo, gluey gluey. Gooey goo for chewy chewing. That's what that goo goose is doing. Do you choose to chew goo too, sir? If sir, you sir choose to chew, sir. With the goo goose, chew, sir, do, sir. Mr. Fox, sir, I won't do it. I can't say it. I won't chew it. Very well, sir. Step this way. We'll find another game to play. Bim comes. Ben comes. Ben brings Ben broom. Ben brings Bim broom. Ben bends Bim's broom. Bim bends Ben's broom. Bim's bends. Ben's bends. Ben's bent broom breaks. Bim's bent broom breaks. Ben's bad. Bim's bad. Pig. Big bands. Pig bands. Bim and Ben lead bands with brooms. Ben's... Ben, Ben's band bangs and Bim's band booms. Pig band, pig band, boom band, pig, big band, broom band. Ah, oh, God. Ugh. Pig band, it's the wrong voice, sorry. Pig band, broom band, big band, broom band. My poor mouth can't say that. No, sir, my poor mouth is much too slow, sir. Well, then, bring your mouth this way. I'll find it something it can say. Uh, Luke la, Luke luck likes lakes. Luke's duck likes lakes. Luke luck licks lakes. Luke Luke's duck Luke's duck licks lakes. Duck takes licks in lakes. Luke lake. Duck takes licks in lakes. Luke. <laughs> duck duck takes licks in lakes. Luck. <sighs> duck takes licks in lakes. L Luke luck likes. Luke like. Luke like. Li <laughs> 
Luke Luck takes licks in lakes that duck likes. There's no that in there. Luke Luck takes licks in lakes duck likes. I can't blab such blibber blubber. My tongue isn't made of rubber. Mr. Knox, come now, come now. You don't have to be so dumb now. Try to say this, Mr. Knox, please. Through three cheese trees, three free fleas flew. While these fleas flew, freezy free, freezy breeze blew. Freezy breeze made these three fr made these three trees freeze. Freezy trees made these trees fr cheese freeze. That's what made these three. That's what made these three free fleas sneeze. Ah. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! That's enough, sir! I can't say such silly stuff, sir! Very well, but then, Mr. Fontnox, sir, let's have a little talk about Tweedle Beetles. What do you know about Tweedle Beetles? Well, when Tweedle Beetles fight, it's called a Tweedle Beetle battle. And when they battle in a puddle, it's a Tweedle Beetle puddle battle. And when Tweedle Beetles battle with paddles in a puddle, they call it a Tweedle Beetle puddle battle battle. Tweedle Beetle pa Puddle Paddle Battle. And when Beetles battle Beetles in a Puddle Paddle Battle, and the Beetle Battle Puddle is in a battle. When the beetles battle beetles in a puddle paddle paddle, and the beetle and the beetle battle puddle is a puddle in a bottle, they call this a tweedle beetle bottle bottle. They call this a tweedle beetle bottle puddle paddle battle but blah. They call this a tweedle beetle bottle puddle paddle battle muddle. And when these beetles fight these battles in a bottle with their paddles, and the bottles on the poodle and the poodles eating noodles, then they call it. There's no but then there. They call this a muddle puddle tweedle poodle beetle noodle bottle paddle battle. And now wait a minute, Mister Fo Sox Fox. When a fox is in the bottle, where the tweedle beetles battle with their paddles in a puddle on a noodle eating poodle, this is what they call a tweedle beetle noodle poodle bottle paddled muddle duddled waddled what a tweedle beetle noodle poodle bottled paddled muddle duddled fuddled waddled fox and socks, sir. Fox and socks, our game is done, sir. Thank you for a lot of fun, sir. <sighs> oh. oh, my fucking God. Ah, oh. that is not nearly going to be as good as um that guy who just blew my f blows my fucking mind over how he does it, but that. That, ladies and gentlemen, that was the 108th entry for the 100 Days of Narration Challenge, and this is the end of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge, and I've read an entire book. It's, I mean, it's still a children's book, but it was an entire book that I read through badly, but it was... Shut up! It's the end! Five! I'm sorry how late this is. Uh, I've been out all day, going to LA, um, seeing the sights, being everything. Maybe I should have done this, you know, early in the morning. Um... Uh, because I did wake up at 6.45 a.m., despite the fact that I was horrifically jet-lagged. I don't know how I managed to wake up that early, but I um, should have done my recording then. Didn't think about doing it. Just watched a lot of Cartoon Network and just lazing about before going out for the day with friends. And ah, It's been a long day, and by the time we came back to the hotel, it's 11 p.m. at night, and I'm so sorry this is coming out like... Uh, technically, since I am, rec since if I were recording this in Adelaide, then it is still the same day. So it's not yet 24 hours past when I would normally do the recording. So I am still technically going to get it on the one other day. And if, uh, burp, sorry. That's, that's a tradition now. And so, therefore, I have done it. I've done it. 100 days. It's over. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. oh, my god. 100 days. Um. Wow. It's, um. I don't I haven't prepared a speech properly for this moment, but, uh. Part of me is quite glad I did this, but another part. The bigger part wonders what use was this at all in the end, because, I mean, it, uh, I guess, you know, just practice talking on the internets, uh, for this thing, and that's, that's practice enough, should be, I don't know, you know, I don't know, maybe I could have just, just, uh, you know, just, uh, done, uh, just talking by myself in front of, uh, anything and just, uh, do it that way, but, you know. That's also an option that I did not think of 
at the time. Anyway, 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 anyway. That was the 100th entry, and that was, sorry, uh, it was uh, Fox and Socks by Dr. Seuss, if I didn't mention that before, which I did in the beginning. But uh, yes, 100 days of 100 down. So what did I read in all that time? Well, now is a time when I will read out everything. I will read out everything that I've done in that time. And uh, let's do that, shall we? Uh, day one was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Day two was Bulgaria, the book two, Queen of Sorcery. Oh, sorry. The first book was by J.K. Rowling, obviously. And the second book was like by David Eddings. Uh, another fantasy book, both of them fantasy books. Then it was Star Wars, Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. I didn't read enough. I haven't read a, read a lot of the Timothy Zahn stuff. Um, I don't own a lot of Star Wars novels. I just, I, I mean, I just uh, got a couple of Timothy Zahn stuff, and uh, I enjoyed those. But uh, I could have done a Timothy Zahn week. Damn it. Oh, well. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Next is The Life and Death of Superman by Roger Stern. Why? I don't know. Why did I do? Why did I buy the book? Why did I read it? I blah, 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 blah. Next was Boy by Roald Dahl, who's another favorite author. Uh, I should have gotten Going Solo by Roald Dahl as well at some point, but, you know, hindsight, 2020. And then an entry from the best fantasy stories from the magazine of fantasy and science fiction by Edward L. Furman. And I didn't write down which... Uh, which uh, which title I decided to choose at the end, so I don't remember what it was, but I'm sure you would know because you can always go back and check it yourself if you would like to, or maybe you don't. I don't know. Day seven, which was my very first mystery book challenge, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, someone guessed it was uh, Red Dwarf: Better Than Life uh, by Grant Naylor, uh, which was a portmanteau of the word Grant, Rob Grant and Dog Naylor, who were two authors, but they didn't combine their powers for the one book, Red Dwarf, Better Than Life. And the winner of that particular mystery challenge was Ego Ing Ing Ego Angel. Ego Angel. I was trying to make it sound fancy by going, no, yes, because he's a, the, the Ego Angel with the twelve at the end, and his wife is going to be a slightly strange pronunciation for Ego Angel. But no. No, it's just Ego Angel. Just Ego Angel. No need to be fancy about that. And then we had Day 8, Jennifer Government by Max Berry. Uh, day nine was The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. Day ten was Dancing with Eternity by John Patrick Lowry, who was the voice of, sni of the Sniper from Team Fortress 2. Uh, day eleven was Dragonlance Chronicles Volume 2, Dragons of Winter Night by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. I don't know why I decided to read that book, because, um, you know, maybe I should have made it a, a week, a week of Dragonlance books, because I do have a lot of Dragonlance books. I'm... Vaguely ashamed that, to admit that I did that, but there we are. Now it's out in the open. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. That should have been an interesting week to do. To do Frankenstein and The Invisible Man and, you know, a lot of the classic monsters of literature. But uh, I decided to do a, uh, what, what, what was it? What was it? What was it? What was it? A League of Extraordinary Gentlemen week. Um, books from which uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen were based upon. But uh, yeah, that was that was an okay substitute. But you know, classic uh, Victorian monsters would have been a more interesting to do thing to do. I think. Yeah. Okay. And what else do we have? Thirteen lightning spliced by Zelly Blake, who was a co-star on um, uh, the, 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 the superhero slayers. And uh, this was her first novel, and unfortunately, the her last novel because she passed away. That's not a great way to do this. Oh, God. Uh, am I really going to go through all 100 books? I might as well, because this, um, this is the end. So I might as well have fond memories going through memory lane. Day 14, when I decided to be a little bit tricky, and then I decided to use a textbook. How to Think About Weird Things, Critical Thinking for a New Age by Theodore Schick Jr. and Louis Vaughn. Uh, nobody guessed that correctly. Nobody. Not a single person. 
And um, who could blame them? Because that was a st stupid idea for me to use a, a, a textbook. So, um, yeah, that was... Uh, I'm surprised people put up with it. But uh, thank you for putting up with that. And uh, I went for something easier the next time. Day 15 was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. Then it was Day 16, Sherlock Holmes, The Naval Treaty by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Then Day 17, A Short History of the World by Jeffrey Blaney. Day 18, Keeping the World Strange, A Planetary Guide, edited by Cody Walker. It had several um, articles, and they were all done by different people. Crooked Little Vein by Warren Ellis, and then Batman Nightfall by Dennis O'Neill. I think it was around that time that I decided to do something close to like a theme, because for the three days, like 18, 19, and 20, it was uh, Keeping the World Strange, A Planetary Guide, which was a uh, a series of academic, uh, sort of, well, yeah, academic essays based upon the comic book series Planetary. And then there was uh, Day 19, Crooked Little Vein by Warren Ellis. Warren Ellis is uh, more famous for his work in uh, comic books, uh, stuff like, uh, well, Planetary, first of all. So there we are. Transmetropolitan and um, Next Wave Agents of Hate, which is uh, one of my favorite stuff from him for Marvel. And, uh, and then we had Batman Nightfall, and that was another comic book thing. Um, slightly unrelated to the other two, but, uh, you know, a Night Batman set in the DC universe, planetary set in the Wildstorm universe, which is now apparently part of the DC universe, because, um, you know, DC just didn't want to separate their heroes into two distinct worlds. No, everything is now collapsed into one. And, uh, and, uh, and, um... John Constantine is apparently Constantine, 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 again, I don't know how to pronounce the name, is apparently young again, and part of the Justice League. What? Oh, that's crazy, that's stupid. What are you doing, DC? Anyway, uh, moving on, Day 22, Day 21, Matilda by Roald Dahl, and someone guessed that correctly, let me look up the actual name, it was, no, it was two people, because I was an asshole for doing that for uh, Mystery Book Challenge number two. So Mystery Book Challenge number three had two winners, and it was Dragoon0144 and BlueMew16. And uh, a lot of people guessed that. Wow, 28 people tried guessing. 28 people. You know, the numbers really thinned out towards the end, and I think it's because most people just got tired of the whole thing. Uh, also, um... Um, just the books were just not easy to guess at as well, I think. So whoever, to all the people who stayed on, I th and uh, that would include Dantar Blade and Zariot, who are pretty much there from the beginning. Madness. Uh, thank you for doing it. And also Nick Slasher, who also uh, did the thing as well. Uh, kept guessing, even when the, I'd never got given the prize. Until the very end. Oh, we're, we're, we're getting in spoilers for that territory now. Uh, day 15, what was it? Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. Day 16, Sherlock Holmes, The Naval Treaty uh, by Sherlock uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. That's interesting. I actually did choose the, the particular short story that time. Or did I choose it random and then I actually typed in what I did? I have a spreadsheet of, uh, of the books that I, was, that I was going to do. Normally, if I um, flip to a random page, I don't write down, and it's a short story compilation, I don't write down the actual uh, uh, short story um, that I picked in the end. So that's nice of me to do that. Thank you, me. Thank you, past me, for thinking ahead of uh, me doing this. I, I, this is past me saying you are welcome. That's weird. You're having a conversation with your past self. How do you feel? Yeah, it's it's like it's like this, strange, like strange. Anyway, uh, day seventeen, a short history. No, I'm. Wait, where am I? God damn it. I'm bad. I <laughs> bad to day 16 days. No, 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 no. I've moved past that. We've moved past that, Edwin. We've moved, pa we've moved past that. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Read the rest of the shit, Edwin. Read the rest of this. This shitty list of books that reveal your horrible taste as a reader. Go ahead. Do it. Do it now. Day 22 was Down to a Sunless Sea by Neil Gaiman. So you can't say I have a horrible taste, can you? No, you can't, because I'm reading Neil Gaiman, and he's a wonderful author, and you shut up if you think you hate him, because you don't, because you, you, you just, you're just jealous of his wonderful, brainy writing and nicey stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was actually an art 
school that he wrote for a newspaper that I can't remember. It's available online, basically, so you can read that for yourself as well. Day 23, Ender's Game by Ar- Orson Scott Card. Uh, day 24, Sanford Meisner on acting by Sanford Meisner and Dennis Longwell. Um, that was one of uh, the, doing the whole like reading books uh uh, of uh, of acting things that I should be reading but have not. Day 25, The World's Wealthiest Losers by Margaret Nicholas. Eh. Day 26, Schoolgirl Milky Crisis Adventures in the Anime and Manga Trade by Jonathan Clemens. Well, that's uh, that's uh, that, that, that's uh, that was the thing. That was an interesting book to, book to pick up. And I read an article from that. I think I read the entire article out, actually, for that one. Because it was only it was just three pages. Yeah, whereas these days I'd read like six or so pages. But um, yeah, back then, yeah, I kind of changed the rules of how much I read as I went along. At first it was just, oh, I'll, I'll just read one random page. That was, you know, uh, I'll read one random page several times over to try and sound it out and get it right uh, the second or third times. And then somewhere a long time came two pages, you know repeated several times and then after a certain point it just became like oh however pay a number of pages number blah, 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 number of pages i can do within a 20 minute period or a little bit more than 20 minutes maybe half an hour maybe 50 minutes yeah that review of minecraft went on forever i needed to do uh cut it down a bit there sorry where was i oh yes barcelona anyway Going on, day 27, The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. Again, I used a short story from that. I don't remember what it was, but uh, yeah, I should probably... I feel like I want to read the rest of The Bloody Chamber, all the different short stories of The Bloody Chamber. It seems well-suited to my demeanor and my uh, kind of uh, vocal delivery for these sort of things. Day 28, Interesting Times by Terry Pratchett. Day 29, Men at Arms by Terry Pratchett. Day 30, Soul Music by Terry Pratchett. Day 31, Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. Day 32, Masquerade by Terry Pratchett. Day 33, Feet of Clay by Terry Pratchett. And Day 34, Going Postal by Terry Pratchett. Well, you can probably guess the theme I went for that uh, particular week. And that was the first theme week as well. Um... Unless the previous week was the uh, theme. No, 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 no. That was the first themed week. And the mystery book challenge was for day 28. Interesting Times by Terry Pratchett. And uh, yeah, somebody got that right. Who got that right? Who got week four right? Near Mouse 622 Wookie. That's an interesting name. And the number of guesses. Pardon me. Uh, pardon me. Uh, pardon me. Damn it, didn't make make another one. Ah, well, there we are. And the number of guesses went down from 28 to 13. So I think around this time I had my longtime viewers and uh, everybody else just dropped off because um, we are, I was just boring people to death and they just did not want to hear more from me, which is okay. I forgive you. I will find you and slit your throat in your sleep. I should probably stop whispering like this. Yeah, makes it all creepy and sounding. Anyway, so that was the first themed week, and the uh, and the second one was uh, uh, yeah, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen week, which I uh, mentioned before, and uh, that was on day thirty-five, the strange case of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson, and that. Uh, partic- and that was also a mystery book challenge. And that particular mystery book challenge was won by Dwy1996. Dwy1996. Uh, very, very great. And the number of guesses actually leapt up a bit, but uh, still not quite 28 guesses that Matilda was. And when I think about it, it's a little bit surprising that Matilda got that many guesses as well. I mean, it's... Uh, is it, is, it a, is it a classic that's read in American schools? I mean, I'm assuming most of my, my audience is in America, but uh, yeah. 
it's a it's a British classic, and I I I I, uh, I had it read to me or I read it myself when I was in a, a proprietary school in in Aust- Adelaide, Australia. But uh, this is a thing that's uh, that you Americans uh, read when you're in the in in, in the in the school system that you are in. You can't answer me because I'm just uh, I'm just uh, talking to myself out loud. <sighs> okay, right. Where was I? Okay, here we go. Barcelona. Day thirty six was King Solomon's Mines by Henry Ryder Haggard. Haggard, sorry. Um, another book I've actually read. So I just read it. Rampage Dracula by Bram Stoker. A book I read a long time ago in high school. Never picked it up again after that. Should probably do that again just to refresh my memory. And because my taste in high school was pretty bad, so I didn't understand what a good or bad book is. Probably still don't, actually, because my reading material is somewhat uh, slight and slim and tiny. Um, But I do remember enjoying it at the time. Just need to do it again. Uh, Day 38, The Time Machine and the Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. Uh, Day 39, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. Day 40, The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Day 41, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Uh, And uh, the uh, the picture of Dorian Gray is actually quite flowy. I remember getting really, really frustrated with like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea because... It was just a whole bunch of starts and stops, and nothing really flowed well in that one. It was a, it was a really boring description about the seabed, and them and the characters walking around in it, and it was just nope, nope, not getting this out right. And I read that several times over too, so it just got worse and worse with every reading. But the picture of Dorian Gray, yeah, nah, I liked it. I think I liked it. I remember being quite enamored with what I read. Anyway. Uh, moving on to day 42, which was another Mystery Book Challenge week. And that was Mystery Book Challenge number six, was it? Number six? Yes. Yes, there were few guesses, but definitely not as many. And there were only five correct guesses. Because uh, in previous weeks, if anybody guessed at all, they guessed correctly. Except for week two, which was mm, interesting. Yeah, uh, the textbook. No, definitely not doing that again. And uh, so, forty-two. Uh, sorry, uh, day day. What day is it? Day six. Day six. It was guessed by Zariot. Zariot. Yes, and uh, he actually guessed the right game and the right system that it was on. Oh, and also this mystery book challenge. Did it that particular week, the theme was uh, Game Reviews Week, and I chose for day 42, Mortal Kombat 2 Review by Game Master number 20, all from August 1994. Yikes. Wow, that's a really old review. And uh, Zarya guessed that one correctly. And what were the other rest of the reviews and stuff that I did for the rest of the week? Well, Day 43 was Final Fantasy VII Preview and Duke Nukem 3D Preview because they were pretty short, so I just did two at that time. And that particular one was by Ultra Game Players number 97, May 1997. And then we had a Daikatana Preview on Day 44 from the Computer Gaming World number 155, uh, June 1997. Day 45 was Bloodstorm Feature from EGM Squared. Uh, I guess it was a spinoff of uh, Electronic Gaming Monthly of some kind from uh, July 1994. Then we had a TIE Fighter preview. Most of these are previews rather than reviews, so maybe I should just call it Video Games Preview and Review Week or something. TIE Fighter preview from PC Action Number 6, April 1994. Then we had Under a Killing Moon review, but even then it was not really a review because it was... um, uh, uh, the unfinished version the that they got sent and they didn't have the finished versions but they just went ahead and did review anyway based upon that unfinished version so they were a little bit uh, we, uh, leery of giving it a score based on that but uh, it was it was quite uh, promising I believe it was quite positive in general uh, where was I? oh yes under Killing Moon review from PC Zone number 19, October 1994, uh, day 48, Stock Control 2 review, Computer Gaming World uh, 104, March 1993. And then uh, 
Oh, here we go. And then after that begins another themed week. And of course, another mystery book challenge, mystery book challenge number nine for day 49. And this was shit lit week, shit lit week, which I asked for suggestions from, for, and uh, lots of people gave me some things to think about, to chew on. Yeah, quite, quite horrible, horrible, horrible things to chew on, you horrible, horrible people. And uh, day 49 was Mystery Book Challenge number 7, and that was guessed correctly by Demonic Bliss. A lot of people actually guessed this, actually. Well, not a lot. It's uh, 10, 10 total. Sorry, 9 total. 9 total people guessed, and... Uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? What am I thinking of? Nine people guessed correctly. Uh, sorry, nine people guessed, but only three guessed the correct book because I believe everyone else guessed um, something other than what I uh, uh, read. And the correct guess that I that finally won was Demonic Bliss. Yes, Demonic Bliss. And the book was Eclipse from the Twilight series because I am stupid and i just wanted to do shit that week and read horrible things by the great stephanie Meyer. then we have ode on a mammoth cheese weighing over what seven thousand pounds by james mcintyre which was chosen mainly because of the title because it's a silly silly title to say ode on the mammoth cheese weighing over seven thousand Say that. Just say it. Just say it. You, you, you just you can't do it without doing the whole yeah thing going on there. That was a poem. Uh, day fifty one, the Shadow God by Aaron Rayburn, which was eye rolly bad, like preteen stuff, shit, awful. Fifty two, Rough and Ready by Sandra Hill, which was um suggested by uh Mike A K uh, Mike. Why did I write that down? No, yes, yes, yes. Mike, a.k.a. Mike. Uh, M-I-K-E, a.k.a. M-1-K-E. Oh, I saw what you did there. Uh, coined the phrase, shit lit week. And that, and I've uh, taken that under advisement and then chose to steal it for myself, for my own purposes. So I'm just, you know, giving the due to him for giving me the name for this particular week. Uh, for that particular week. Day 53 was My Immortal by Terry Gillespie. Yeah, that caused me so much pain and suffering, and I can't believe I went through more than one chapter of that. Day 54, Inspiration for the Interactive Generation by Matt Dickey, which caused me to want to punch someone in the face several times. Day 55, Myth 50 Shades of Grey, which in hindsight, I should have actually read on a day 50. But um, yes, day 50, 50 Shades of Grey, so what I did there. Did you? Maybe not. Whatever. I don't. I don't. It's it's a long story. It's it's really complicated joke. I'm not worth explaining. <clears throat> anyway, um, and I wanted to cap off the week with a what with a with a uh, renowned stinker. But unfortunately, I think the bit that I read didn't have. Oh wait, no, no, it was the sex scene. The you know. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, you know, all that part. That was nothing but that part, just nothing but a series of oh my's. Day 56, again, another mystery book challenge week. Mystery book, mystery book challenge number eight. And uh, yeah, uh, several people guessed correctly because it was a web series, web novel series. And uh, some people just used the whole like, uh, let's take some of the words he said and plug it into a search engine and then find it, which you can do with most of the books, actually. And uh, I didn't say it was against the rules. I just think it's, you know, if you think that you can handle, you know, the, 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 the weight of the guilt on your conscience for doing such a thing, you horrible person. Then by all means, do the whole uh, search thing. But, uh, you know, real people, real people would uh, instinctively know what book I'm reading from. Or in this case, a web novel series, but, you know, whatever. And uh, that was, and the book, what, 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 what was that? It was a theme week. And the thing I read was Sailor Nothing by Stefan Gagne. 
Stefan. Oh, God, I don't know. He told me how to pronounce my his name correctly, and now I've forgotten again. I'm gonna go with Stefan. Stefan Gagne. Stefan Gagne. And uh, so it was the th- there was a Steph- uh, Stefan Gagne week, and I read a couple of things by him. I guess I'm I'm a fan of his uh, uh, web writing series. I haven't read I haven't actually uh, read his stuff in quite a while, but I did really enjoy stuff like Unreal and Unreal Estate, which is the second thing, which is the day fifty seven, and also Slayer's Chaos, which was day fifty eight, and uh, Anachronauts, which was on day fifty nine, and also Slayer's Demiurge, which was on day sixty, and uh, day sixty one was City of Angles, which I haven't actually read properly yet, but I did enjoy the part that I did read, and day sixty two is The End, which is a Ranma fan fiction, which he did way back in the day. In fact, uh, the Slayer's Chaos and Slayer's Demiurge, which were Sailor's um, fan fiction, and those were great to read as well back in the day when I did uh, do the reading of the fan fiction. Yes, I don't read fan fiction anymore nowadays. Yes, that's that that lie. Just sit there for a moment and then move on. Okay, and now we're on to another themed week, another themed week that we are doing. And uh, yes, day on day 60, 63, and that was, of course, Mystery Book Challenge number nine. And uh, yeah, 15 guesses in total, uh, which is pretty good. Again, not as great as Matilda, which is ironic because, well, it's not really ironic. I don't know. I mean, I'm bringing up Matilda again, but uh, it's not. It's coincident. No, 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 no. If it was the fewest number of guesses and... Uh, Matilda had the num. Well, Matilda does have the n- greatest number of guesses. But if this had the fewest number of guesses, say one guess, and that one guess got it right, then it would be ironic. But the fact that I'm having the two side by side juxtaposing each other um, doesn't really make sense. Anyway, I'm confusing the issue here, and the issue is Shumi Forever Three won this particular challenge, and he won or she won because she guessed the that the book fifty sixty three. May 63, Mystery Book Challenge number 9, was Charlie and the... Ch- Charlie, No, not, not, not the, Ch- the Chocolate Factory. It's Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator by Roald Dahl. And then from there, I read several other Roald Dahl books because it was Roald Dahl week. And we had James and the Giant Peach. The collected short stories of Roald Dahl, which I think was... I read from a short story from there. The, 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 the Lodger? The Lodger, yeah. I specifically picked out the Lodger for the very first one that I read. And then the 66 was the Magic Finger. 67 was the collected short stories of Roald Dahl. I, get, I, I flipped to a random page this time and read... What was it? Bitch. Yes, that's right. That's, that's, that's... You know, kind of on the nose, you know. It's, it's a story called Bitch. You know. And uh, Day 68 was the fantastic Mr. Fox, which actually I'd just like to mention. I saw the movie recently on my plane flight over uh, by Wes Anderson. That was interesting. Um, I'm not sure if I liked it or not. It was there, and I saw it, and uh, I, I, uh, I didn't stop watching it once I started watching it, so it must have been interesting. I just don't really recall a lot of highlights that I would go, yeah, that's the best part in this thing. But I did watch it. And I've read the and I've also read the book out loud to people on the internet. So there. That was day sixty eight. And day sixty nine was Charlie and the Ch- Chocolate Factory again, because you know, started with Charlie and the Glass Elevator, Great Glass Elevator, and ending with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory going backwards. Yeah, that sort of makes sense. That was Roald Dahl. So then, then we got to day seventy. Day seventy. Ooh, another mystery book challenge week. And this, oh, this. I am so, 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 so sorry. No one guessed correctly this week. The fewest number of guesses guesses in quite a while. And no one could guess correctly. It was Star Trek Memories by William Shatner with Chris Kresge. And that was that was an autobiography. It was autobiography autobiography or either either autobiography either autobiography week or biography week. And just not enough clues. And I read from a really bad section which didn't actually have 
anything William Shatner related. It was about the history of Star Trek at that point. I was like, why would you read this part? Why would I read this part? Uh, no. Idiot, Edwin. Idiot. So that was a bad part to read from. If I skipped ahead to something which actually had William Shatner in it, you know, once his ego starts to shine through. And I made a wonderful performance as Kirk and was amazing. And I don't know why I'm doing this for William Shatner because he doesn't really do something like this at all. Uh, so yeah, that's that. And then, so... Going on with the autobiography slash biography week. Day 71. If Chins could kill with confessions of a B-movie actor by Bruce Campbell. Day 72. The Shrine of Jeffrey Dahmer by Brian Masters. Day 73. I Am Spock by Leonard Nimoy. Day 74. I Am Jackie Chan. My Life in Action by Jackie Chan and Jeff Yang. So, I had two I Ams in a row. Day 75. Shakespeare. The World as a Stage by Bill Bryson. And Day 76. Star Trek movie memories by William Shatner and Chris Greskin. And uh, yes, and that was autobiography week. And uh, it was the, the second week where nobody could guess correct anything correctly. So yeah, that meant that I had to do something drastic, which was to say I did, um, I made things easier for day 77. And what was day 77? Day 77 was mystery book challenge number 11, 11, and we had a lot of guesses, and uh, yeah, more guesses than usual. S well, sixteen, which is more, one more than the usual. That's uh, that's uh, since um, uh, for a while anyway. And the winners were the strong bad man and QWERTY UI one three seven. And they guessed Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. I wasn't even trying to be tricky anymore. I just picked the first book. Even though I'd already uh, used it previously, I thought, you know, why not? Seven Harry Potter books, seven days. That's a, that's, that's a week down. That, that's, a, that's a week's challenge. So do it. And I did. And it was, you know, um, Day 78, 7, uh, the, the, uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Philosopher Stone. That is easier to say, isn't it? But um, no, Philosopher's Stone, not Sorcerer's Stone. <sighs> you people and your alliteration. It's not a real thing. Sorcerer's Stone, Philosopher's Stone is a real philosophical concept. Alchemy, God. Okay. Not going to complain. Day 78, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Day 79, The Prisoner of Azkaban. I'm not going to say it's Harry Potter and, because it is clearly and. Uh, day 80, Goblet of Fire. Day 81, Order of the Phoenix. Day 82, Half-Blood Prince. Day 83, Deathly Hollows. All with Harry Potter and the at the beginning, and all by J.K. Rowling. And that was a fun, kind of fun, kind of fun week to do. It was a bit frustrating at points, but... Uh, it was fun to try and do Severus Snape, being all such a bitchy sort. Yes, Potter, you're a bitch, and I'm Severus Snape, and I stand in judgment of you. Okay, moving on. And then we come to another theme week on day 84, Mystery Bug Challenge number 12. And uh, I think a lot of people guessed this because mainly it's a review that's available online. Ah, you can already guess what the theme was. And the theme was review week. And uh, the winner was Capitalist, Capitalist 111. Although oddly enough, I had fewer guesses this time than I did the uh, for Harry Potter, which is interesting because it was a review of freely available online and people could have just, you know, done a search engine search with just the random uh, words I said. But no, some people, are, I guess some people are honest and other people are not. You know who you are. You terrible, horrible person. Anyway, the mystery book challenge number 12 was The North Review by Roger Ebert. That wonderful man. Passed away recently. Sadness, sadness, sadness. That's a horrible thing. Sadness, sadness, sadness. Really? Is that the best you can do about the passing of, of, of a man? Of any man? 
especially Roger Ebert, who was such a champion for movies and for criticism of movies and for taking movies seriously as an art and movies seriously as, as something that's important in our lives that, that we go to to watch and, and either escapism or, or, or you know, um, to, to under, to, well, not to understand because he understood. He not understand because he understood, really. Because there is, you cannot argue with a giant screen bearing down on you, telling you these are the things that you have to understand. It is propaganda. Movies are propaganda. But he understood the power of propaganda and how positive, positive things might enact change if enough people watch it and embrace the idea. Of course, that means also dangerous idea. You know what? This is going too far. No, no, no. We're not going to talk. Not going to... Keep going. Keep going. Sorry. 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 Day 85, Kitty Grade Review by Polly, which was the, um, which, what, which was at, actually spurred me into doing this particular week. I haven't mentioned what the, what this particular theme for this, for this particular week was. It was, um, bad review week. Bad reviews are good things. Good reviews are bad things. Bad reviews are bad things. Oops. Sorry. Hit the mic. Uh, basically anything, um, uh, Basically, something bad is going down. And I did uh, read reviews about movies, anime, and games. There wasn't any about books. There wasn't any about music. Apologies for that. Should have found something for books. Not sure about music because I, I don't have much taste for music, so I don't know what's good or bad anyway. Uh, then we had The War Z Review by Rich Stanton. God, that was horrible. A Transformers Revenge of the Fallen review by Armand White. I wish I could find his review for the first film because that was amazing, but could not find that anywhere. Son of a bitch. Uh, Day 88, Daika, uh, Daikatana review uh, by Robert Coffey from Computer Gaming World, uh, number 193 from August 2000, which was a complete reversal from uh, the article, the preview they did in uh, 1987, which I read several days ago before that one day 88 uh sorry we're done day, 80. day 89 the minecraft review by kyle the g-man goldman and um that review made me so mad <laughs> that review made me so uh so hysterically comically mad um i'm sorry if i pissed off some christians um with with uh with uh how i felt about it i just i i i don't like this whole pushing of, well, I just I just mentioned the pushing of propaganda in films. Now I'm going like, no, you can't push propaganda in games. Blah, 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 blah. I just think it's just a horrific misinterpretation of what Minecraft is about. Um, it's, I, but that doesn't mean that he's wrong. It just means that he didn't think things very deeply through God, I'm just. It's 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 um. Oh God, I'm not gonna go bother explaining. I'm tired. It's it's late where I am at the moment. I am recording this at um. After a long day of going around with my friends, it's past eleven o'clock at night at the moment. So it's uh. By the time this goes up, it'll be after midnight in uh, America. So it might seem that I failed my challenge, but I have not. Because it is not past midnight over in Adelaide where I started the challenge. So it doesn't count. Maybe a bit. Well, I didn't go up at the usual time anyway. So, yeah, but at least it's almost done. It's almost over. Let's go with the rest of uh, what I did. And, uh, oh, yes, Day 90 was a review for Virago by Katoni15, uh, which I didn't read all the way through because it was super long. And it was about uh, a game I did voice acting for, Virago. And uh, as strange and weird as that game was, I also love this review for being so full of hate and spite for the game. It's it's quite it's it's, it's quite it's quite wonderful. It's quite wonderful actually. And he and he, I think he actually liked my character because it's uh, at one point I. Um, I delivered a line like really well that he likes. Like uh, it was, uh, "Are you fucking mental?" You know that uh, I can't. I can't do it right now, it's, and it's too late. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Super loud. Super loud. And then we get to things which recur in the more recent memory, like day ninety-one, 
uh, which was this, which was another the last mystery book challenge, mystery book challenge number thirteen. And this was another theme week, and uh, in this particular week, everyone won. Every single person who gave the correct guess, and even who gave an incorrect, in one case, an incorrect guess, uh, but guessed the author correctly, um, won this particular mystery book challenge. And uh, what was the book? Well, it was Jingo by Terry Pratchett. And as you can guess, it was a Terry Pratchett week, uh, themed week. So uh, who are all the winners? Zariot, who had won before, but in this particular case, he decided to opt out from uh, actually receiving the prize. Uh, Murder Man Sam, who prefers to be just called Sam, but that would get confusing because, you know, there are plenty of Sams, but only one Murder Man Sam. So I think you should embrace your name, name Sam, even if it's something you made when you're 15 years old. Murder Man Sam, it's, you know, run with it. Murder Man, man, Sam. Don't actually don't, no, 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 don't, 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 don't murder people, please. It's, um, or if you're going to murder people, don't blame me in the end for it. I mean, it's it's on you, man. It's on you. Uh, Tom Donath, Mecca Hobo, Emmanuel Ruya. These three decided to opt out, or they never replied. And in one case, uh, replied a little bit too late because they didn't see my message until it was far too late. And in in the case of Eman Emmanuel Ruya, he actually guessed feet of clay. Ah. Uh, Possibly because I did mention uh, in my uh, recording that uh, oh I've uh, read books by this author before and and uh, I guess I guess he thought well maybe he reads he's reading the same book over again and uh, yeah and then we had several guesses who um, from people who did actually ask for something Dantar Blade Capitalist One 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 M Walker Puppet. M. Walker Muppet, rather, rather than Puppet, The Dark Master 13, Demonic Bliss, Nick Slasher, 64 Powered, Sven the Crusader, uh, sorry, my stomach is growling. Yeah, what are you growling about, stomach? What are you growling about? You've had lots of food, lots of unhealthy food, actually. Uh, you should probably, you know, uh, not eat as much as you already have. And Anthony DeMoss and Nigel John Slack. That was a lot of people to record for, but um, I had to do it because it was a very, well, I wanted to do it because it was the very last Mystery Book Challenge. Uh, because, I mean, there should be one for day 98, but I couldn't do it because, as you all know, at this point, I had to go to Los Angeles and trying to organize both uh, a recording of um, Mystery Book Challenge, as well as keeping up with uh, doing the prizes, is difficult. In fact, I have already, I am, I am already, I've already failed the day. No, I haven't. I haven't failed day 100. It's coming out. It's come out. I will make this, and then it will come out, and then people will listen to it, and it will mark the ending of a magical, epic journey. Are people even going to listen this far into this thing? I mean, they've already heard me do like the Fox and Socks thing at the beginning, so they might go, "Well, that's it." And oh no, no oh wait, wait, wait! Listen to it. no. He's just going to read the entire list of things he's done. Why would you do that? Why would you do that, Edwin? Why do you just love the sound of your voice that much? I kind of do. I kind of do. Anyway, um, Terry Pratchett week. That's right. So day ninety one was Jingo. Day ninety two was Carpe Juggling. Day number ninety three was The Truth. Day ninety four. Thief of Time, Day 95, Monstrous Regiment, Day 96, Making Money, Day 97, Unseen Academicals, and yeah, that was Terry Patrick Week, and for the last three books of this particular challenge, uh, not really a theme here, but, um, you know, kind of thing, Day 98, To Kill a Mockingbird, by Harper Lee. Day 99, Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft, which I have read the first part of the first chapter before. Stop, shut up, stomach, shut up. God, you can't be... Okay, fine. After this, we'll get some instant noodles or, or you know, Slim Jims. Do you like Slim Jims? I'm sure you like Slim Jims. We've never had Slim Jims before. We should try it. And then we can probably say, nope, this is terrible. Oh, yeah, st short story. No, no short story. No short story. We are going to finish this, and I'm going to eat. And then um, I will do recordings of stuff maybe later on for uh, regarding my trip, and we can talk more there. Uh, where was I? Day 99 was called Lulu. I did the first chapter before, and I was going to do the second chapter, part of the second chapter while on the plane, but obviously that fell through. 
Uh, so I'd recorded outside in Little Tokyo. And now, day 100. Yes, Fox and Socks by Dr. Seuss. That was done. That was done at the beginning. Maybe I should have done it at the end. So it'll be like a big build up, but no. No, 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 no. Just did it at the beginning. So whoever wanted to hear that, they've had. And whoever stayed this long to listen to this, thank you. Thank you for listening to my rambling about my 100, 100 days and whatever miscellaneous thoughts I had about uh, things. It's been a wrong, wrong, wrong and long road. Um, I don't think I've noticeably improved that much over 100 days, but uh, I'm vaguely happy that I've done it, if only to say that, hey, for 100 days, I read a page or two or three or four or ten, you know, however long it was, um, out of a book or a view or or all sorts of sources and try to do, do it to the best of my ability. Some things I think I will not be able to do. I cannot deal with really factual stuff, like dry descriptions of stuff, like uh, what happened with the uh, not longest journey, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which was, ah, frustrating, because it was just like, and then the plant life and the sea life at the bottom of the ocean, and then they glowed green, and then the path, and then the people went through, and then some of the some of them touched the sea life, and it went twitch. And no, 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 boring, 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 boring. I'm more happy with livelier character stuff, comedic character stuff, which I, I quite enjoy. Uh, even though I do tend to pull back a lot for the purpose of narration, because if you push if you push too hard a narration, it really hurts the ears after a certain point because. No one wants to hear somebody do a narration like this all the time. Yeah, who? Cool, man, it's all right. Yeah, you want to hear me talk about this? Uh, you want to hear me to talk about this uh, narration, this this book, not talking in this particular voice? Yes, once upon a time, Jack and Jill rode up the hill and uh, rode up the hill. Edwin, I don't, I don't know what Jack... Anyway, this is the end, my friends. This is the end. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Um, I guess I can't say I'll see you later, but um, yeah, see me in other stuff around the YouTubes, the Newgrounds, the whatever, video games, whatever. I will see you in those things and your dreams because my voice is dreamy. Yeah. All right. Catch you all later, folks. Hey, you seem like a cool, wonderful, and or awesome individual with impeccable taste in voice actors. So why not follow me on Facebook or Twitter? You can keep up with the latest projects I'm in, or that my friends are in, or that you could be in, because I occasionally post links to open editions to various projects that require voice acting out there, or that nobody's in, but they're interesting projects nonetheless that you may also find interesting. Also, lots of random thoughts about whatever's on my mind at that particular moment. Usually it's about food, or video games, or foodie video games. Mm. Anyway, you can follow me on Facebook at OmadonVA, or Twitter at Omadon. Hope to see you there!